This is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. This is Interview with a Succubus. Before I get into it, just want to mention Patreon. If you'd like to support Astral Club on Patreon, you can certainly do so. Uh, when you join up, of course, you get to, uh, to chat with uh, uh, some of the other folks on uh, in Patreon. And, of course, there's a direct mail there so I can answer your questions and and you can make comments and what have you. If it's something of interest, just go down to the description and click the link. Next up, Astral Projection Lessons. If you'd like a lesson to learn how to Astral Project or, you know, just sharpen up your current abilities, be glad to work with you. I've worked with folks now all over the world, and there's been some pretty good success stories. If you're interested, go down to the description and just send me an email asking for more information. Okay. Uh, I projected... And once I left my body, I had been thinking about succubi, which, of course, is the plural of the word succubus. And uh, these female lustful demon spirits have been reported, geez, in human literature going back as far as we have literature. And certainly the Middle Ages had a lot to say about them. These are spirits that came in the night to feed upon the lusts of humans. There's also a male version, Incubi, uh, but I don't really have any experience with that end of things, so we're going to stick with the succubus end of things, the female version of this demon. I had consulted with my angel beforehand. He knew better than to try to talk me out of it. Once I get my mind on something, I'm going to do it. I did ask if he could lend me some energy for protection, which of course he did. And uh, I did some other preparations as well, which I'll probably mention in a second. And uh, after I had the experience, I, I woke up like I usually do. And I scrawled all, uh, everything that happened. And it didn't take more than 15 minutes. Uh, I recall that. It was like a blur. And then I went back to sleep. And when I woke up, finally, for good, I took a look at my notes and other than making a few minor changes, I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, I like to do things fresh uh, once I've had the experience so that I don't forget anything major. So I'd like to relate the experience right now to you of my experience interviewing this succubus. Okay. As I said before, succubi are spirits that appear female of pure lust, whose mission it is to bring about the ruin of men by exploiting their desires. That's an interesting way for me just to start off with my notes. I must have been in some sort of weird mood there for a bit. They feed off lustful emotions and gradually drain humans of their life force, sometimes ending in physical death and spiritual enslavement. That latter part there is something that I don't think is always mentioned. I remember when I had my experience as a teenager, uh, I certainly became progressively weaker and weaker as the visitations continued to occur. But something else that I found out later on from my angel is that if you actually die from these attacks, let's call it what it is, of these uh, succubi or succubus in the singular, you can actually end up in spiritual enslavement to them. So it's not just physical death. It's a lot more than that. Uh, so, you know, be warned, right? Now, as I said, I had tangled with one of these succub succubus when I was uh, a teenager. And it had been a close call. Uh, only my research and my willpower saved me from physical death. And as I already indicated, possibly a lot worse. This time, though, I remembered what the cavern of the succubi looked like, so I decided to return to that cavern, uh, the one that I'd escaped from, to find out more about the nature of succubi. I prepared myself, as I said before, by calling on my angel's guide, my angel guide's energy, and I manifested the Tower of Light for protection. I, uh, I had an episode a while back where I talked about the Tower of Light, so if you'd like to review that, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, I also memorized the 23rd Psalm, which uh, is a big help for your self-confidence. 
when uh, once you get there, knowing that there's other help uh, available if needed. Once done, I targeted the ident of that, you know, sucky by cavern, and I reached out. When I regained consciousness, I was in a desolate cavern littered with bones and withered husks of bodies. I think that's probably uh, a bit of an interior decorator type decision to, you might say, set the mood. I don't literally think though they're they're husks of physical bodies i just think it's it's their version of a spiritual death and they decided to set the tone which uh i have to admit they did a pretty darn good job it'd be the hell of a setting for any halloween party i've ever imagined i gathered my thoughts and i sent out an invitation for a succubus to come to parlay with me in short order, an extraordinarily beautiful woman landed six feet or about 1.8 meters away. F- flesh-colored wings folded into her back and disappeared from sight. The creature before me was a nightmare dream come true. I'll be honest with you. She ticked all my boxes with dark long hair, pale white skin, enchanting deep pools for eyes, uh, ruby red lips, and a body a femme fatale would kill for, and a gothic air of mystery. The powerful gravitational field around her pulled at me, luring me with an irresistible silent invitation to forget it all in her arms. For a few seconds, I saw myself shedding all my problems in her sweet embrace. Feeling myself falling into her trap, I imagined her as a fat spider in her web. That image, at last, brought me back to my senses. You all know about my arachnophobia. That's a sure way for me to break a spell. You all have to think of your own things. I started with, I am... And then she cut, she cut me off. She said, Rick, we are familiar with you. She said it simply. That's always unnerving. <laughs> you know, you have this, this, this uh, feeling, this idea that you're this uh, mysterious traveler and that you can go wherever you want and no one's going to notice and no one's going to know who you are. And so when you leave, you can kind of leave cleanly. It's always uh, a bit upsetting and certainly, as I said, unnerving to know that perhaps you're expected or at least you're known. For a moment, though, at at that point, I worried that my tower of light protection had failed, allowing her to read my thoughts. But then she spoke up again. (laughs) She said, worry not, you're safe for now. You visited with one of my sisters a short time ago. You might say we all talk. I had assured her that you would return one day. And here you are. That was 50 years ago, I said in amazement. To us, your 50 years is less than the blink of a human eye. Welcome back. We hate to lose any guest. I glanced around the charnel house again that was their cavern. She had me off balance already. I badly needed to seize control of this interview. I'm here. Uh, I'm here. Damn it. Why am I here again? I kind of said that to myself. Her full, tempting lips pulled back at my stammer showing sharp canine teeth. Man, they were sharp. It required my full force of will to finally pull myself together and collect my scattered thoughts. I announced, I'm here to find out more about your species of demon. Will you cooperate? I kind of said that like as quickly as I could. I just forced it out so I could get it all out before, you know, my f- the fog in my head started to collect again. She smiled a predatory grin and announced, Of course, I and my sisters have nothing to hide. What would you like to know? First, I'd like to know what to call you. And then I'd like to hear your origin story, I began. I was trying to, trying to go into the, the interviewer's uh, mode 
you know, the, the no emotion, just getting to the facts type of thing. And it's because I was struggling with my emotions. As you know, true names have power. But you can call me Lilith. As to our story, after our rebellion against the enemy, we followed the master and helped to establish his kingdom. I will not share with you what we did in those dark eons, but once man and his cousins began to swarm over the earth like locusts, we were transformed into demon spirits of lust to serve our own purposes and that of the kingdom. Our true origin is beyond your level of understanding, but this creation myth is good enough for your intellect. Let me just mention a note here. Demons often refer to God as the enemy, and hell is Satan's kingdom. Lilith was Adam's first disobedient wife in the uh, actual biblical story. She kind of was cut out in our, in our current Bible, and they just start with Eve. But Eve was, in essence, in, in this myth story of, uh, in the Bible, she was the second wife. See, um, Adam's first wife, Lilith, had been sentenced by God to be the mother of demons because she had been too willful. Uh, she wouldn't be subservient to Adam. Uh, to preserve her power, she kept her real name secret from my prying eyes, though. Um, remember, names have power. If an entity has your name or you have its name, you have a certain amount of power over that entity. Uh, Lilith, of course, was, was a nom de guerre that she selected for the purposes of this interview. It wasn't her real name. I tried not to feel insulted over the intellect crack. Arrogance can be a trap, and in this place, I could not afford to fall into any such landmines at the risk of my soul. I thought about asking her a more mundane question to bring her down a bit. I said, how do you like your job? She leaned back against the cavern wall, a seductive smirk playing on her lips. Oh, it's quite exhilarating. Humans are fascinating creatures, so easily swayed by their desires. It's like playing a grand symphony where I am both conductor and muse. I felt I was beginning to get control back now. Time for a psych question. Isn't it lonely? I probed. Intrigued, yet wary. Feeding off desires means never forming genuine connections of your own. She laughed softly, the sound almost melodic. Loneliness? Hardly. I thrive in their dreams, whispering sweet nothings, igniting their passions. But connections? Those are for the weak. Power is far more intoxicating. I felt a chill run up my spine. But don't you ever regret your choices? The destruction you leave in your wake? Lilith's gaze sharpened. Regret is for the foolish. I give them what they want, just not what they need. They seek pleasure, and I deliver it in spades. If they fall into despair, that's their burden, not mine. Have you ever experienced love? I asked, probing deeper. Her expression darkened for a moment. Love is a dangerous game. It binds you tightly. I've seen many who thought they could tame me. They were wrong. Yet, I continued cautiously, I sense you enjoy the thrill of the chase. Oh, I do, she admitted, her smile returning. Each soul is a new canvas, and I paint their darkest fantasies. But there's a thrill in the hunt, too. The challenge of seducing the unwilling, bending their will to mine. It's an art. I couldn't stop myself from recalling my own teen experience and how close I'd been to soul slavery. What's your ultimate goal, then? Just to feed? Lilith's eyes glinted with mischief, not just to feed, to reign, to be worshipped in their dreams, to leave an indelible mark on their souls. When they wake, 
I want them haunted by my memory, consumed by the void I create. And finally, to absorb all they are or ever will be into our kingdom, to join our veritable army of happily enslaved souls. That bit really hit me deep. I recalled from my teen experience just how I couldn't get her out of my mind. I couldn't concentrate on schoolwork. I couldn't concentrate on anything. I just kept dwelling on her. And it, 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 it was... It was like this dark pit I was being, you know, forced into uh, where I couldn't think about anything else other than her. I was fascinated and repulsed at the same time. I allowed her profane words to sink in. You are different than other men, she purred. Join us as a free being and you will have all the power and lust any man could dream of. I could feel the webbing forming around me, waiting for a moment of weakness to draw me in once and for all. As I struggled with her offer and her overwhelmingly powerful feminine presence, she reached a delicate arm out to stroke my cheek, but recoiled like she touched a hot stove as she encountered the Tower of Light. That moment broke her spell. I'm afraid I must decline your attractive offer as I have other engagements. A flash of fury passed over her delicate features before she regained her composure. Sensing my time with her was rapidly coming to an end, I spoke up. I must take my leave now, I said. Thank you for the interview. She smiled. Off you to Zane. Off you to Zane, I thought as I flew home. Until we meet again. Well, that was the encounter. If uh, you found that interesting, please hit the like button. Share it with those of like minds. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comments, questions. Have you ever had to tangle with a succubus? Uh... Or if you're a female, an incubus. Uh, any questions you have? Are there any questions you would have asked that maybe I didn't get round to? Uh, it was difficult, though, trying to keep my composure with this creature in front of me. Uh, I think luckily I'm a bit older now, so it was probably a bit easier for me to, uh, you know, deny myself her invitations. Believe me, as I recall, as a teenager, it was a lot harder. <laughs> I failed quite a bit in fending off the attentions of the succubus that had become attracted to me. Uh, but at any rate, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane. <laughs>